Hello, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today we're discussing stem cell therapy for autism spectrum disorder in the Philippines. So what is ASD? Well, currently it includes several conditions that used to be diagnosed separately. So autistic disorder, pervasive developmental disorder, and Asperger's syndrome are all put under the same umbrella as ASD. It includes difficulty with communication and interacting with other people, restricted interest and repetitive behaviors, and symptoms that hurt the person's ability to function properly in school, work, and other areas of life. So how common is it? Well, worldwide data shows that about 1 in 54 children are diagnosed with ASD. About 500,000 cases are in the Philippines. Because the ASD criteria has changed over the last five years or so to include that umbrella, it is hard to compare historically. It's four times more common in boys than girls, and it's reported in all racial, ethnic, socioeconomic groups, spans the entire spectrum. So how is it diagnosed? It's not always an easy diagnosis. I mean, it's not like you do a lab test and say, you know, aha, somebody has, this shows they d definitely have autism. It doesn't work like that. There's a wide range of symptoms and it's usually a two-step process. So pediatrician assessment regarding milestones on behavior, voice, sleep, things like that. And then it can go to a team of specialists who can look at the child and, and assess, you know, according to their uh, specialty. Um, for ASD diagnosis, the problems occur in two categories, uh, communication and social interaction issues, and then restricted and repetitive patterns of behavior, possibly some genetic testing. So we're not really going to go into the potential causes of autism because we don't know what causes it. There's a lot of theories on it. On car we're like, inflammation in the brain, there can be some uh, genetics involved uh, with other family members. Let's look at some of the traditional treatments. There's really no one standard treatment and there is no cure. So it depends on each child's specific needs because some uh, children don't have issues, let's say, with uh, behavior. It's more with communication. So <clears throat> whatever the problem areas are is where the therapy is focused. This may include behavioral management therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, education, school-based therapies, medications, nutrition, OT and PT, along with speech therapy. The various medication options um, are often not ones that are approved for autism. Um, they're really off-label uses that may or may not be helpful. SSRIs, which are antidepressants, or tricyclic antidepressants may be used, antipsychotics in some situations, stimulants, which are really for the ADHD part, um, which may include Ritalin or Adderall, um, anti-anxiety medications, and possibly anti-convulsants. Um, a lot of ASD children have seizure issues, so this may be appropriate. So let's delve into stem cell therapy for autism spectrum disorders. Treatments to date have focused on the use of multipotent stem cells, which are mesenchymal stem cells, MSCs, or hematopoietic stem cells, which are HSCs. Um, the mechanisms of action of these stem cells um, may include uh, reducing inflammation, that's one of the main things that they do, immunomodulation, which is altering the immune system to help with the disorder, the formation of new blood vessels, um, and cell-to-cell -cell signaling for reprogramming and the formation of additional new cells. So along with uh, the traditional medications, unfortunately the stem cell treatment is not a cure as well. But as you'll see in the next few slides, it can dramatically help and our experience shows that as well. Recent evidence suggests that immune dysregulation and neuroinflammation play a role in the etiology of ASD, and that's two of the things that these stem cells work really well on. Um, stem cells are able to strongly inhibit CD8 and CD4 positive T lymphocytes and natural killer cell overactivation and proliferation by inhibiting the pro-inflammatory TNF. Um, so 
part of that is basically saying that they reduce inflammation significantly uh, with those effects. So here's a study, uh, rational use of mesenchymal stem cells in the treatment of ASD. Uh, this was recent. So MSCs can be transplanted directly without genetic modification or pretreatment, differentiated according to the cues from the surrounding tissues, and do not cause uncontrollable growth or tumors. What that means is that none of these cells that are being used uh, cause tumors. So you don't have to worry about that. In addition, you don't have to use um, ablation of the immune system prior to offering these treatments, which is called myeloablation. You just don't have to do that, which means it has lo much less risk um, for the treatment. Uh, several proof of concept clinical studies uh, and meta-analyses have shown the safety and effectiveness of MSC treatment in autistic patients. So um, it has been an effective treatment with multiple studies uh, to boot. Um, we don't use embryonic stem cell therapy or IPSC therapy. Those are not ready for prime time use. Um, embryonic stem cells can get rejected by the body um, as well as cause tumors, so nobody's using those, and rightfully so. So if anyone suggests that you should have an embryonic stem cell therapy or IPSC, which is induced pluripotent stem cell treatment, uh, run away. So here's a table of some studies um, showing promising and impressive results. Um, so, but we don't exactly know the mechanism of how these mesenchymal stem cells work um, in the uh, uh, patient's brains. Um, various autologous stem cells, allogeneic stem cells um, have been used in studies. Um, the stem cell numbers have been very high. For instance, if you look at the second one on the list, um, two times 10 to the six is two million stem cells per kilogram. And that's approximately what we use uh, for patients, um, and you know, it's very high numbers. Um, this was about a six month um, study, uh, and they showed significant um, improvements in both um, behavior and uh, social interaction. And then you can look at the other results here as well. Um, the one below that was incredibly high numbers 30 million stem cells. Um, Oh, actually, that's not per kilogram. That was just 30 million. Okay. Here's one using autologous cord blood infusions. Um, this is actually the uh, Duke University study um, where they took patients who had saved their own umbilical cord uh, at birth, and they used those in 25 children, um, and it varied 1 to 5 times 10 to the 7th cells per kilogram which is 10 to 50 million cells per kilogram. That's an extremely high number. Um, and they showed, and, and this was simply done by IV infusion, okay? Nothing into the, uh, directly into the brain. They showed significant improvements in behavior in the first six months, and that was sustained at the 12 month interval. So uh, very good outcomes. Uh, here's a couple more studies, uh, stem cell therapy for autism this one can propose the combined use of mesenchymal stem cells and cord blood, all right? So that means you use the umbilical cord tissue itself and the umbilical cord blood um, is useful. We frequently do that as well. One on the right um, showed that due to the particular immune and neural dysregulation observed in ASDs, mesenchymal stem cell transplantation could offer a unique tool to provide better resolution for the disease So our stem cell treatment program for autism, uh, we have locations uh, at several countries, um, but in the Philippines, we're in Manila. And the process starts with a free phone consultation with one of our licensed, experienced stem cell doctors. We have patient concierge representatives who assist with all the travel logistics. You know, if you're local, you can just drive to the clinic, but if you're from out of the country, then we'll pick you up at the airport, take you to and from the hotel and the clinic, uh, and make it very easy uh, for patients. So our cells come from an FDA regulated lab in the United States. Very high quality control standards, pristine safety record. Worldwide we've done over 17,000 procedures to date um, with no significant um, adverse effects. 
Um, in fact, the only adverse effects that we've seen have been mild to moderate, including low-grade fevers, some chills, um, maybe some nausea and vomiting. But no rejection occurs. That doesn't happen. These don't have the markers. They're so naive. They don't have the markers to elicit an immune response. Um, our quality assurance exceeds the FDA standards. Um, we do culture our umbilical cord stem cells. That is the way to get to ridiculously high stem cell numbers that you see in those studies. We offer those for a very cost-effective uh, amounts. Our stem cells have 90 plus percent viability, and when we culture them, we keep them below the fifth generation, which is extremely important in making sure that they're active um, and potent. So we have several options. Um, one would be to have several visits over one year, um, and that would give up towards of 200 million stem cells total. Um, another one would be a five-day stay where you get that amount over a period of several treatments. Um, and the other one is very simple. You just come in for one visit. We use one to two million stem cells per kilogram along with some stem cell exosomes. Um, our treatment is a little bit different than IV. We do use intravenous, but we also use intrathecal into the spinal cord because we want to get very high numbers directly into the cerebrospinal fluid into the brain. So cell totals are determined predominantly by the child's weight. So to get the process started, visit us online at r3stemcell.com slash philippines. Uh, give us a call on the plus one USA prefix 888-988-0515. We'll um, help you with the whole process, as I mentioned, with regards to logistics um, and getting you guys in for a free consultation online. Um, our stem cell treatment program for autism is the most cost-effective in the world. If you look at treatment in um, Panama or other countries, this will run about 25,000 US dollars. Ours are way less than that, at least 75% less, because we know that patients are going to need multiple treatments over time. It's not a one and done kind of situation. Usually it's once or twice per year um, is what we see, and the results continue to improve uh, but you have to keep in mind that it's not like you spend all the money, you know, up front and that's it. So we price it out so that it's very cost effective keeping that in mind. All right. Thank you very much for watching.